I'm currently paying $2,500 per month for this one bedroom apartment. And for around the same price, I'm upgrading to a two bedroom apartment with an ocean view in paradise. And I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of living in Los Angeles, why we decided to move, where we're moving to and how moving might double my income. And yes, I know $2,500 per month in most parts of the country will actually buy you a huge house. But in LA, you're not paying for the apartment. You're paying to live close to the beach. You're paying for the amazing year round weather. And by being in LA, you're just a couple hours away from the mountains, the desert, the beach, and lots of beautiful scenery. But maybe most importantly, what you're paying for by being in LA is to be around a lot of very interesting and successful people. Now, make sure to smash the like button because I'm also gonna be talking about all the negatives. And LA is my home. I grew up in the suburbs, not too far away from Santa Monica, which is where I currently am. But I think we can all agree Los Angeles is overpriced because not only are you paying for all these pros, you're also paying for a lot of cons. For instance, where I currently live, there is a ton of homeless people. And I wanna be clear, I'm not the victim, they are the victim, this is a terrible situation, but it's crazy to be spending this much money and to have people out on the streets yelling, but that is a very real negative. And I'll talk about a story later, at times, it doesn't feel safe here. There's also things that people complain about, like the smog, the fire, the crazy amount of traffic, and all the taxes that you have to pay, and again, not only do you have to pay a lot more in income tax, just living in LA, specifically in Santa Monica, everything is more expensive. Now, to be honest, some of these cons I think are overblown. I hear a lot of people complaining about things that I really don't think are that big of a deal. I'll talk about which of these cons are actually as big of a deal as people say, and which ones are kind of overblown later in this video. But one thing I wanna explain before I go any further is a lot of people think paying rent is just a waste of money. You're just throwing money away. And I completely disagree because yes, for 2,500 bucks a month, you can actually buy a piece of property in the rest of the country. But the one thing that I think so many people forget about is that in my opinion, paying rent is an investment. It's just an investment in yourself. For instance, by living in Santa Monica, where it's extremely expensive to live, I'm surrounding myself with other people that can afford to pay rent here, which means they're probably at least financially pretty successful. And one thing I like to keep in mind is you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're spending time around other people that are successful in the fields that you're successful in, it's gonna lead to more and more success. And I will say, since moving to Santa Monica, I probably 10X the amount of money I make per year. And I have to say the number one reason why is because I've surrounded myself with so many successful e-commerce entrepreneurs. And the truth is, I don't even think I would have started my e-commerce business, or even if I would have started it, it wouldn't have been nearly as successful if I wasn't moving here. It's because of the people I met while living here that I was able to start my company and they gave me a lot of answers and they also helped me to grow my company because when I would have problems, I would go to them and they'd help find solutions for me. But the craziest thing about all this is, I actually got my first apartment in Santa Monica completely for free. And I'm gonna talk about how I did that in next week's video. So make sure to subscribe because this is a crazy hack that everyone should know about. And I personally traveled and lived in a lot of different cities, a lot of different even countries. I have lived in Chicago, Miami, Las Vegas, LA, I've lived all over South America. I've traveled to Europe and Asia and Australia and pretty much all over the place. And I have to say, over these last eight, nine, 10 years of traveling, Los Angeles has been my dream location. And as I said, it was where I was born and raised, which brings up another important point. A lot of the people talking about moving out of California, moving out of LA, it's because they grew up in somewhere else. Maybe family is somewhere else for them. And this is something that's extremely important that not enough people talk about. Part of the reason, even though I'm going to be leaving LA, I probably eventually will come back is because my family lives here. And this is something that I think my generation and even I really underestimated for a long time. By living close to family, you have a support system because there's that little part of your reptilian brain that says, hey, if things really go bad, if I end up losing all my money, at least I can move back in with my parents. Or if there's issues, I have family members that I can rely on. And I do think that this is something that I for a long time undervalued is how important it is to have family close by. Even today, moving out of this apartment, because my parents don't live too far away, they offered to drive down for the day and help us move the apartment, which is a type of support you don't get if you live in a city where you don't have family. On top of that, I have a lot of friends here. I went to college at USC, which is in Los Angeles, and so a lot of my friends still stayed around the area. So Los Angeles is home for me, and when I first quit my corporate job, I really had this strong desire to travel all over the place, and you know what, that was a blast while I was doing it, but there was a part of me that always knew I was gonna be coming back to Los Angeles because for one, 
I love the weather here. When I was in my corporate job, I was living in Chicago. And I have to say the first year living in Chicago, the winter was actually kind of fun. It was a fun novelty. But by my second winter in Chicago, it was terrible. And I think it's crazy because so many people in Chicago would complain about how terrible the winter is, but yet they never thought, hey, maybe we should go somewhere that it's a little bit warmer. And that is something about Los Angeles that's actually, I think, really important psychologically is it's really hard to be depressed in Los Angeles. Let me, let me explain here. If I'm having a terrible day, if I'm feeling really down, if I go outside and it's a beautiful blue sky day, 70 degrees outside, it's really easy for me to realize, oh, you know what? Maybe these problems that I'm having aren't that big of a deal. But when I was living in Chicago and I was having a bad day, I was having negative thoughts, I'd go outside and it was freezing, it was uncomfortable, it was gray skies. It would lead to me going down this negative thought loop, this negative spiral, and I ended up having really bad depression while I was living in Chicago. And I think part of that is this whole seasonal affective depression disorder. And there are very clear studies linking vitamin D and sunshine with better moods. And the thing that people forget is when you're in a better mood, you have more energy, you have more serotonin and dopamine flowing, and you're gonna be more productive. So for me, living in Los Angeles led to me being a lot more productive. Now I am gonna get into all the reasons why we're moving, all the cons in depth in just a minute, but there's two other things I wanna talk about. One, for me, happiness is being able to spend time at the beach. When I'm at the beach, I'm able to relax, and a lot of times it leads to more creativity, it leads to some of my biggest insights, and the thing is you can't really put a dollar value on one big insight. A lot of times when I was having a problem with my e-commerce company, I'd go to the beach, I'd lay out for a little while, maybe jump in the ocean, and by the time I was done, I'd have a very clear solution to my problem. And everyone's different, but for me, the beach is just rejuvenating. And another thing I love about specifically Santa Monica, which this isn't true everywhere in LA, but where I live in Santa Monica, there are tons of amazing restaurants, really unique food that's either walking distance or biking distance. And I love that as an entrepreneur because when I've lived in other cities, when I lived in the suburbs, for instance, after a really hard day of work, you don't wanna get in a car, you don't wanna drive. It's nice just to be able to walk to a restaurant, get some food and walk home. And where I currently live in Santa Monica, we live very close to Third Street, which Third Street has a bunch of different shops, tons of fun things to do. And before everything went down last year, one of my favorite things to do was Ariana and I would actually go out to a restaurant and then go to the movie theaters. And it was really cool because there was actually a lay down movie theater right on Third Street. And we had the AMC pass, which meant that we would go to a movie every single week. And that for me was really important because it was an escape because I work right here. And if we're watching TV right here or we're watching a movie right here, it's not as relaxing. So it was really nice to actually go out to a restaurant and go to a movie theater. But as you guys know, Everything changed last year. All the restaurants were closed down. The movie theater was closed down. Even the park close by was closed. And I used to go out and play basketball. The gyms were closed. I used to do a lot of jujitsu. Obviously last year, jujitsu was off the table. And at one point last year, even the beaches were closed. Now some of that stuff has opened back up, but a lot of it is still closed down. And that is part of the reason we're moving. The place that we're moving to, things are pretty much back and open. And look, obviously everything going on is really sad. It's really crazy. And this is one thing that's been crazy living in LA during this time, is it feels like a lot of the rules are completely artificial. Some of the things that are closed down just don't make any sense. And then some of the things, and when things open up and all that kind of, it's, just, it's completely random. So that is one of the big cons and one of the big reasons why we are leaving. Now, there are a lot of things that people talk about that I really don't think are that big of a deal. For instance, a lot of people talk about the smog and the pollution. Now, if you live downtown in downtown LA, maybe that's really bad. Where I live, since we're close by the beach, there really isn't that bad of smog. The air quality is really pretty good, I think because we do have the ocean breeze. Same thing with the traffic. Everybody complains about the traffic, but for me personally, since I don't really have a commute, all I have to do is go from my bedroom over here to my workstation, I don't really have to deal with that. And that really doesn't bother me. But I will say it's a little bit frustrating. If there's something really unique or interesting going on on the other side of LA or even in Hollywood during a weekday, chances are I'm not gonna go because what should normally be a 20 minute drive will end up being an hour to hour 30 drive. But that's one of those things about living in LA that you just know during the weekdays, you don't really wanna drive that far. And there's usually something fun that I can find to do on the west side over here. I also see a lot of people complaining about the fires. And again, since I grew up in the suburbs of LA, this one doesn't bother me that much. I think this is completely overblown to be honest with you. I do think if you have property or real estate in a more rural part of 
California, maybe that's a bigger deal. Since I'm in the middle of the city, the chance of a fire really affecting me isn't that likely. And I do have to say growing up, we would have fires occasionally. Nothing ever got close to my house and the smoke would be pretty bad. But growing up, it was actually kind of a cool thing. We didn't have snow days growing up. What we would have is smoke days. And if the smoke got really bad, they basically would cancel school. So for me personally, when there's a fire, there's something kind of comforting about that smell. Obviously, I know that's a terrible thing to say out loud because there's so much destruction and everything happening. But really the point I'm trying to make is the fires have nothing to do with why I moved. And I don't think it has too much to do with why most people move, but it's really cool apocalyptic B-roll to show as a reason why Los Angeles and California is falling apart. Now I will talk about some real negatives about Los Angeles and California in just a second, but the last thing that I hear people talk about so much that I think is completely overblown is the people. Very often you'll hear people in these type of videos talking about how the people are so fake and it, it's so hard to be good people here and all that kind of stuff. And look, I, I do think there's some truth to that. If you're going to Hollywood and you're trying to meet people at a club, you're gonna meet a lot of fake people. That's just the way it is. But I have to say, I've met some of my best friends in Los Angeles and you just have to know where to go and where to find people. For instance, I've met a lot of my friends through entrepreneur meetup groups. Obviously, you're gonna find more interesting and less fake people at an entrepreneur meetup group than you would at a fancy Hollywood club. But now let's talk about the real problems with Los Angeles and California and a lot of the reasons why I'm actually moving. So one of the first ones that so many people talk about and I think is a real issue and I don't know what the solution is, is the crazy homelessness problem. And look, again, I'm not the victim here. The people that are homeless are 100% the victim, but it's a real problem. I don't know what the solution is, but I do have to say that there's something about paying $2,500 a month in rent and living right next to a bunch of people that oftentimes are not mentally stable, but I do have to say at times it feels unsafe. Now I understand not every homeless person is an addict or has mental health issues, but it creates an unsafe environment. For instance, Ariana and I will go most mornings to a park nearby and go work out. And it's become a common occurrence to hear people yelling, cursing, getting into fights. And at one point, we even had someone come up to us and start screaming at us to get off the basketball courts. And they were extremely aggressive. And I thought I was gonna have to get in a fight with this person because they were getting up in our face. And then I realized, oh, this person is legitimately insane. And it's scary to have people that are mentally unstable on the streets. And I wanna reiterate, I feel for these people. This is a terrible situation. There's not an easy answer, but it's not something I necessarily wanna live next to if I have the choice to move. It's also extremely expensive here, and not just in Los Angeles, but Santa Monica is even more expensive than most of the rest of Los Angeles. And it's almost become a joke in my family. When my parents come to visit, I'll tell my dad, hey, make sure you have a meal beforehand, because if we're gonna go out to a dinner at one of the fancy restaurants here in Santa Monica, you're gonna pay a lot of money for really small portions. It's become an inside joke at this point where I say, hey, remember, it's Santa Monica portions. But it's not just the food, everything is more expensive here. For instance, I was looking at getting a private yoga session to have someone come and give me a private yoga lesson, and it would cost $100 here in Santa Monica, but where I'm moving to in Mexico, for an equally qualified person, it only costs $50 for the same hour-long private yoga session. So by moving, effectively, I'm doubling the amount of money I'm making because my purchasing power is doubling. But I'll talk about the real way that I might be able to potentially double my income later in this video. And there's some tax things I'll talk about later in this video that'll make a lot more sense. Another really big con that I kind of mentioned earlier is because Los Angeles is so spread out, if you make friends with someone that is on the other side of town, you're just almost never going to see them. It's almost become a joke because I have friends that are on the other side of LA and trying to coordinate times and places to meet up is so much harder than it should be. You can meet up on the weekends pretty easily, but during the weekdays to try to casually meet up for dinner ends up becoming a really tough task. And the last con, as I talked about earlier, is everything is closed. It's, it's, things are starting to reopen now, but it's really crazy what the governor has been doing. And he closes certain restaurants, but then we catch him actually going to a restaurant and eating indoors. And a lot of the different politics here just don't make any sense. And here's the thing, back when I had my corporate job eight, nine, 10 years ago, I actually took this trip to Southeast Asia. Specifically, there's a place in Thailand called Koh Phangan, which is probably my favorite place in the world. It's this little hippie yoga island. And while I was traveling around this island, I met someone that said that they had moved there, that they were a digital nomad. And that was one of the first things that inspired me to wanna to quit my job so I could have the kind of freedom that this guy had. And when I first quit my job, I did a ton of traveling. I was trying to grow my business 
At the same time, I was traveling. I spent a lot of time in Asia. I spent a lot of time in South America. I spent a few months in Peru, Ecuador, lived in Colombia for three months, lived in Brazil for three months, lived in Argentina for three months. And I was doing all this traveling while at the same time trying to grow my e-commerce company. And I was struggling because the truth is, is alluring is the whole digital nomad thing is, it's very hard to travel and try to enjoy life while at the same time trying to grow an e-commerce company. Now what I realized is once you've grown a company and it's established and you can start creating that passive income, you can start doing a lot of traveling. You start getting a lot of freedom. But for me personally, I had to move and pick a location and stay there and actually grow some roots. And because I moved to Santa Monica, I was able to start getting a really good friend base. I was able to start getting in a routine. And for me, that's what led to a lot of my success. And this is one of the biggest productivity hacks I have is to find a spot, get in a routine. That way you don't have to spend time thinking about, hey, who are my friends? What gym should I go to? Where should I buy my food? What restaurant should I go to? You can spend a lot of your brain power focused on your business. But for me, things have changed recently. I ended up growing and selling a majority stake in my e-commerce business. And this has led to me feeling the most free I felt in a very long time. And because I have this freedom, it's re-sparked to me this desire to travel and to move around the world because I'm extremely lucky that all I need is a laptop and a camera and I can work from wherever I want in the world. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I think everyone should start their own online business because if you have your own online business, you're your own boss, you can work from wherever in the world you wanna work from. And even though I've had this freedom to be able to work from wherever I want over the last eight years, but it wasn't until recently that I grew my business that now I feel like I'm successful enough that I can go back to traveling. So we're moving out today and I'm gonna be going down spending the next six weeks in Mexico. After that, I'm gonna come back to LA for a few weeks. My parents are actually getting a beach house. We're doing a little spring break style vacation. Then I'm gonna go over to Puerto Rico where my business partner, the guy that bought 75% of my e-commerce business lives. And I'm gonna go meet with him. And here's one of the things, I don't know if I'm gonna move there or not, but if I do move there, I would only be paying 4% tax, basically doubling my income. Because right now I'm paying about half the money that I make to the government. So if I move to Puerto Rico, you could legally pay 4% tax. So that's a way that I might end up doubling my income. But the biggest thing I wanna make very clear here is, I'm not gonna move to Puerto Rico unless it's somewhere that I love. Because the whole reason I decided to start an online business was so that I didn't have to be a slave to money anymore. My goal since I started was to never have to make a decision based on the money alone again. And if I end up moving to Puerto Rico just for the money and I really don't enjoy it, well then I'm still a slave to the money. So we're gonna go spend a week or two in Puerto Rico, see if we like it. But then after that, what I'm gonna do is finally go spend a few months in Southeast Asia. The plan currently is to go to Bali for a few months starting in May. And it's pretty amazing because in some ways I've gone full circle. When I first had my corporate job, I remember meeting this guy that lived in Southeast Asia and thinking, wow, this is what I want but now I have the freedom to be able to go and do it. And the truth is, things might change. After a few weeks in Mexico, I might decide to move back to LA. I might decide to move to Puerto Rico. I really have no idea. And that's the amazing thing again about having an online business is that I have the freedom to do whatever I wanna do. And who knows, maybe the thing that I thought was really interesting, I'm gonna end up not enjoying at all, but I'm extremely lucky to have the freedom to be able to try out all these different things and decide what I wanna do. And if you're new to the channel and you wanna know how I started my online business and how you can start your own online business, you can click right here to see how I started a million dollar Amazon FBA business and how you can do it too. So click on that video. I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.